former world lightweight champion Ken Buchanan meets another former world lightweight champion Carlos Ortiz in the Battle of the Champions. New York, 20th of September, 1972. So Ortiz never beaten in the garden ring. It's up to Buchanan now to try and get the center of the ring and make Ortiz circle around him, use up his legs a bit. 69 fights now, Carlos Ortiz, so uh, he may be carrying just a bit of lead in those legs at 36. doubt about it that Buchanan stays in tremendous condition he's only had a short notice for this fight and he came in at uh, nine stone eight and a half pounds that's almost his best fighting weight the referee there friendly tap on the back is Georgie Coyle New York State Commission appointed referee of course I think the thing to look for is Ortiz trying to use the left hook. That's his favorite punch. And he's waiting for Buchanan to lead with him with that long left hand and try to counter with a... He almost did it there, but it was only a, a tap blow to the head. They're coming up then to the end of the first round, scheduled for 10. So there's Ken Buchanan getting the treatment from the American trainer, Gil Clancy, who also manages Emil Griffiths, uh, twice champion of the world. And Buchanan's father on the outside of the ring there. But Ken, of course, is now self-managed, and he certainly talked himself into a rather lucrative fight here. $25,000 plus all expenses. So that... There's a man who knows his way around, of course, Carlos Ortiz, never beaten in the garden ring. So the range finding's over then in the second round for Buchanan and Ortiz, both former lightweight champions of the world, a lot of pride at stake, and a bit more, I think, for Buchanan because he really can't afford to lose to a veteran like this if he's hoping for the return fight uh, here at Madison Square Garden with Roberto Duran. Ortiz, in fact, made the comeback because he didn't think Buchanan was a particularly good champion or his predecessor, Ismael Laguna, and he's had... Uh, nine wins in that comeback and stopped eight of those opponents. You might say that Ort is using this experience of his now to try and tame the youth, although a youth at 27 knows his way around a bit. Amateur champion, British champion, of course, a title he didn't lose, and then world champion. Ortiz, I think, can match the Scott for left hands, but he isn't as quick. but he certainly bangs hard with that left hand. That's always been his favorite punch, and Ortiz has never been knocked out. No 
Uh, the way this referee keeps getting on his bike there and getting getting out of out of the certainly out of the picture all the time, and I think the, even more so out of the way of the punches coming his way. That's a dangerous punch there for Buchanan because Ortiz pulled him on to that punch. He really made a bit more impetus with that. That's an old pro trick if ever I've seen one. So there's half a minute to go then in the second round. And it may be that Ortiz is trying to make Buchanan fight his type of fight. So that isn't make-up there, of course, for Buchanan. That's just a little bit of grease around the face, helping him to slip a few punches. And Emil Griffith's a very good trainer there, although, of course, Buchanan had some good tutoring from uh, Eddie Thomas, his former manager. It's looking as though he's saying, come on, get those hands moving a bit faster. So round three, and just in case you've just joined us, it's Ken Buchanan, as you would expect in the Tartan Trunks against Carlos Ortiz, both former lightweight champions of the world, and at this stage, looks to me as though Buchanan's pepped up the pace a little bit and should be a little bit too quick for Ortiz. But on the other hand, he can't afford to hang his chin out at all because Ortiz can still punch. The last thing a former champion you loses, of course, is the strength of his punch. He may get a little slow, but he can still hit a bit. is now trying to maul a little bit to try and slow Buchanan down to his standard there. He just can't get around on those uh, toes as much as he could. For instance, when he defeated Dave Charney in England back in uh, 1958, he certainly looked up on his toes a lot more than this. tell by the crowd that they like that punch from Ortiz but I don't think Buchanan did he just dropped that left hand there as he was going to lead to Ortiz's body and the the old pro there shot the right hand punch on to the top suit Buchanan better to really stick to that boxing using that left hand as he is there and trying to do a bit of dancing with it he stands and slugs with Ortiz he could run into trouble you can almost see Ortiz saying why don't you stand still I want to hit you but Buchanan won't have it, none of that if he can help it That's uh, almost the place on the ropes there in that same position where Buchanan was hit that low punch by Roberto Duran, the punch that actually caused the Scott to lose the world championship. So coming up then to the end of round three. Round six there, 
and uh, Buchanan's trainer had a word with the referee there. I think he's complaining that Ortiz is coming in with a head a bit dangerously. They're certainly patching that cut eye. Uh, of Buchanan up very well between rounds but that's the sort of thing he can't risk there in close in quarters he's got to watch that the thing is with Buchanan when he's fighting a man of autism experience it isn't easy to get away from him on the ropes see that Buchanan is trying to pull himself together there, shaking his arms around, trying to get some tempo going. He really is going a bit slow, Buchanan, for his kind of speed, and this, of course, is suiting Ortiz. You may say that Ortiz is dragging him down to his speed level. Well, that's one way of keeping Ortiz's head up anyway, to use these uppercuts. He seems to be getting there and making himself uh, almost into a wrestling match. He should be doing this by word of mouth rather than having to push them apart. So half a minute to go in this round. And there you can see, of course, Buchanan starting to step this pace up, as indeed he must. He realises that if he stands there and just looks at Ortiz, he'll get hit. But he can pick Ortiz off a bit with the left hand. is there just checking what round it is I don't know why he's shaking his head like this he's probably saying well I don't quite know how to handle this fellow he, look, he, looks, he looks as though he's got a bit of arm trouble and arguing uh, with his second I think uh, he really looks distressed and the referee's coming over Georgie Coyle saying what's going on here no he stopped the fight I thought he would well the doctor says that Ortiz is just unable to fight any farther he doesn't claim that he's injured he just run out of gas and there's no doubt about it that's the end of a once great fighter in Carlos Ortiz and it's a very welcome victory as you can see from Ken Buchanan there the former champion of the world who wants to get another crack to regain that title <laughs>